Welcome back to Real Talk NOLA here at CMA10 Studios. Doesn't have the same ring. No, it's kind of, there was some more alliteration with the past place. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully we'll be there again. Anyway, up, up next here we got the review of Pain and Gain. Michael Bay's kind of throwback to, you know, bad boys style filmmaking. Pretty much. I will say this. I was surprised because the original interest that I had in this movie was all based on the fact that it was based on a series of news articles. I believe it premiered in Newsweek or something. It's, like well, that. It's the whole story is based on a true story. It's, it's based on a true story, but the, the articles later came out, and the articles spawned the interest, which created the movie. Right. Um, so this takes place in the mid-90s, uh, 1994 through 1995. Well, since we're saying that, I just want to get off that. I, after seeing the movie, there are things in the movie that can't, didn't exist in the mid-90s. So production coordinators or production designers, whoever, that put stuff into sets, did a horrible job. There's game controllers that came out in 2000s. There's a Taco Bell box that just didn't come out to like two years ago. There's, there's little things that I noticed that took me out of the movie because someone didn't do their job with production design. Just want to say that. Fair, very fair. Just want to say that. Continue, sir. Okay. So you have that time frame. You're in that time period, you know, Sega Genesis is and... Yep, and not, nine, 95, yep. And... Um, what you have is, just a quick synopsis for those of you who haven't seen it, is uh, this series of bodybuilders. Um, series. All of, uh, series. Well, they all, they all <laughs> it's meet It's a trio. Up. It's a trio, trio of bodybuilders. Fine, whatever. You have the trio of bodybuilders who all decide to steal the American dream, a la Robin Hood, but with a lot more brutality, let's Whoa, say. Oh, way more brutality. Um, yeah, they run over this poor guy. They try to blow him up. They force him to drink. They beat the heck out of him. They run him on racks. And to the point where... When the guy tries to go to the cops, no one believes him because it sounds so flippin' ridiculous because he just tries to tell them that bodybuilders dressed up as ninjas tried to beat him up and stole all his money. And supposedly because of some paraphernalia that they found in his trunk, believe them to believe that it's actually something else. Yes. So it was a, it was a well-done movie. Uh, Ed Harris, as the private detective that was hired, was okay role. Yeah. Um, he was, he was kind of too involved with the investigation and everything like that. It was too convenient. It was one of those catch-all detectives who happens to be there for every part of the investigation. Right, right. Um, however, I will say this. A coked-out rock, very, very good acting. Right, so oh, hilarious. I was so, I was so impressed with his acting, and I don't get to say that enough about Mr. Dwayne Johnson. No, no. Don't you think you deserve better? Because I do. We're looking for merchandise to shock, incapacitate, and imprison our fellow man. Would that be cash? Cash. It's all legal and binding. And they're enjoying it. That's not my boy. Give me my money back! With this, I was like, coked out rock? Phenomenal. And, and, there's, and there's even a slight, like, like his weird character arc. He, he, become, he starts off God-religious. Yeah, because, well, he's a recovering coke right, who's very god and religious. And then... And then, becomes, and then he becomes greedy and coked up, and then, he, and then somewhere at the end he has almost a redeeming moment in, yeah. a, in a sense where he almost becomes religious again. So it's, it's just like this like, spectrum of like... And he, does, and he does well carrying the different burdens at the different time. Right. Um, then you also have Marky Mark. Mark Wahlberg, yeah. yeah I know playing a typical tough guy role. But very not much his typical role. I mean, except, except for Four Brothers, this is the first time I've seen him in even close to a villain-esque role since yeah. like... Fear. And it's like, that's really early Marky Mark. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> beating his chest, going after Reese Witherspoon, all that jazz. Yeah. Um, he doesn't really play villains too much. I mean, he plays a guy who's kind of down and out and has to survive and be tough, like we see in Shooter yeah. and all those types, of, or like in Invincible. But this is like, he's actually just evil in this well, movie. Well, saying that, when you watch a trailer, you get the sense that it's just a comedy action film about some st stupid guys. Like almost like a Three Stooges, which I kind of felt about this movie. Very Three Stooges, like th three of guys messing up. But the problem with this movie is, as the story progresses, you, 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 you don't root for Mark. Wahlberg's character. Anymore. No, you realize if he's anybody, playing everybody. And if anybody you root for, you root for Dwayne Johnson's character because you're hoping that he doesn't succumb to the coke. And, he, and you, actually, you actually point out one of the only failings that I found in the movie besides production level stuff. Um, the victim is so... Played by Tony Shalhoub, by the way. Right. Mr. Monk. And <laughs> who... Um, he's so unsympathetic a villain that they had to kind of bring in that Ed Harris detective to play off and put in danger. Right. Because you just almost hated Tony Shalhoub's character oh, so yeah. much that 
And that's, well, what, and, that's and, what happened and, in real life too. Is that Tony Shalhoub's character was such a jerk? And they reference that 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 they reference him being a jerk throughout the movie. Oh yeah. Well, you're, he's he's a hard he's a hard, hard man to like. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of why the guys got away with it for six seven months. Right. Because everyone liked them more. They were just willing to believe whatever they said because they yeah. were likable guys and compared said, to and, Tony Shalhoub. And Mark Wahlberg makes that reference somewhere in the movie where I was upstanding citizen and I was creating a neighborhood watch. You know, and you kind of like. It's, but they're, they're, such, they're so brutal. There's so, such brutality there in that movie. Yeah, there's an underlying... Like, the it's, acting is really well done. The story is really well done. Um, and it's got typical Bay... There's, there's two things to look for in a Michael Bay film. Extreme low angles and lens flares. And these are a plethora of... He made Star Trek? No, well, no, that's J.J. Abrams' lens flare. I'm talking low angles. If you ever watch Bad Boys, you got the guys walking. It's what looking about the, right what up. What about the turning circle shot? You, oh yeah, forget about that. Yeah, just the, like the Bad Boys shot where they're like standing like this, and then there's like a huge dolly, 360 dolly shot. Yeah. He does that in this movie. He does it in oh, Transformers. Oh, and, and women with obscenely large breasts. Oh yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah, always in a Michael Bay film. Michael Bay is a 13-year-old boy trapped in a however old Michael Bay is body making films. Almost a bacon flavored movie, but not quite. <laughs> yeah, but but that's but that uh, but the move the the trailer was so like it made you think something one thing, but the movie is something else. A lot of people think it's a ca- action comedy. I feel it's almost this weird there is some, satire there almost is, or something like there that. There is some laughter to it, but it's only because of how ridiculous the situation yeah, you, is. I, I I was thinking at the end of the movie, I'm like, you're laughing, you're laughing, but the, and then you're laughing at the characters and the things they're doing. But at the same time, you just want to hit them so hard because of how stupid they are. It's like when you watch a horror movie and you someone's walking down the hall and you're like, you don't, you, you don't do that. Don't do that. It's like that. And you see these guys and you just see the train wreck that's occurring with their characters. And you're laughing, but at the same time, you're like, and when you realize and you keep being reminded almost that it's a true story, you're like, how? They actually, at one of the more ridiculous parts in the story, they stop freeze frame and go, swear this is still a true story. Right. Like they have to remind you, like, like I know yeah. this is getting ridiculous, all based on fact. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and I thought that was so great. And kidnap a guy and take his things? That's so illegal. I'm sure we can. Victor Kershaw is a criminal prick who deserves bad stuff to happen to him. We go through with this, nobody gets hurt, right? <laughs> oh no, man, we snatch him. There he is! We grab him, he signs a few signatures. Ah! We give him a protein shake. You don't even know what happened. I watched a lot of movies, Paul. I know what I'm doing. I actually give this one a matinee view. Oh, yeah. I was pleasantly surprised yeah. by it. The acting was solid. The story was well done, especially with the whole playing off of the theme of the American dream, because both yeah. both sides are which motivated I think, by the American dream. Which I think was so great in the times that we're in, how yeah. relevant that kind of story is. Yeah, especially because you know? he's just struggling. And he goes, you know, aren't you tired of this? Aren't you tired of that? And stuff like that. And he sees himself as doing something very American. Right. And then the opposite side... You have Ed Harris who goes who's at, goes after him and takes Tony Schlupe's case despite thinking he's not telling the truth. And Ed Harris because he says it's thoroughly un-American what they did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At the very end, he says that. And I I just love how they both constantly the the characters movie are commenting on how how this relates to things. You know. I will say this: it was a little Scarface-ish, wasn't it? Uh, well, to- totally. Well, there well there's a part where Mark Wahlberg it, the doer stuff. It, it, no, uh, well, the part where Mark Wahlberg is he mentions. He, he tr- yeah, well, no, he tries to do a Scarface accent where he's interrogating Tony Shoup's character. And he, and he, gets, and he gets caught out by right. crappy cologne. So, yeah, and it's in Miami, you know, Scarface territory. But uh, I'm going to give the same rating to Matinee. I saw it for a Matinee. It's a good movie. I don't know if you'll enjoy it thoroughly at night, but it is a good movie. What I was surprised was the, the people who hate this movie. I actually was in the theater with two elderly women who refused to leave until everyone else left because they didn't want to be seen leaving the theater. They wow. were that. I was just like, what wow. is wrong with that? I was like, so people who hate this movie really hate this movie. Uh, wow. So, I mean, like, it's, if you go in and you hate it, I don't apologize for my rating. I stand by everything I just said, but it's, this is the, quite, divi- <laughs> quite a divide. I'll, I will say this, though. I wish Michael Bay would make more films like this, though. Like, I, hate, I, don't, I, I don't like all the, the, the Transformers tech movie. I want something that's very real, you know. And less Megan Fox, which we all agree is.